Eddie, feel good to get the kudos from Andy Reid? Yeah, yeah, it feels good to get the love a little bit. I guess uh, I'm considered one of the greatest running backs now, right? You <laughs> said that he was playing like one of the greatest running backs well, last right. season. Yeah, if he can, it, the, the run he's on is totally oh. unprecedented. And that's what I, I, I looked it up this morning. You, you, the most carries you ever had in a three-game stretch mm -hmm. was 100, which is an immense amount. Yep. He's at 96 through the last three games, mm -hmm. uh, and the numbers are eye-popping, six yards per carry. At What does his body feel like right now? Um, I'm pretty sure he's probably beat up, tired. I mean, you got to think about, you know, how he ended off the year against Houston. I think he had 35 carries over 20 yards against the Texans and then goes up into New England. So you, you almost figure that his body is starting to wear down. However, he's a guy that's been durable, never been hurt. He had a little bit of a hamstring a few weeks ago, but I think that's okay now. But he takes care of his body. Um, he, he's uh, in the weight room every single uh, day after the game, so forth. So he's, he's doing all the necessary things to be okay. And now is not the time to think about, well, should we pull back on his carries? No, you got to put the foot pedal to the metal because you never know when you're going to be back in the situation again. you got to utilize this guy now while he has the hot hand. One of the things that all teams that have faced the Titans have said, especially the last half of the season, is we're going to put eight, nine guys in the box yeah. and we're going to try to stop the run. Yeah. None of those teams have been successful. That's the same exact thing that teams said against yeah. you. We're going to put eight or nine guys in the box. H how is it that they continue to be successful week in and week out against eight, nine guys in the box trying to stop the run primarily? It's imposing your will. You know, when you got a guy that's 6'4", 250 pounds, and th that can take it the distance, and that's learned to run in between the tackles and punish defenders, especially small linebackers, and they'll lean on you, that's what you have to do. It's demoralizing for a defense. When you can take a, a team's strength and turn it into a weakness, the New England Patriots, they were, able, they, they were supposed to stop the run, turn that into a weakness. The Baltimore Ravens had the personnel up front. We're supposed, we're supposed to be able to uh, stop them as well. Turn that into a weakness. So when you can do that, it's demoralizing for a defense to say, hey, you know what? You bring that guy in the box, number 22 will take care of him. You either run him over or take it the distance. It has been phenomenal to watch that. We're lucky enough to have Brian Westbrook, one of the best running backs yes. of this era, yes, on, on the show often. And, and there are certain running backs I watch today, and I'm like, man, it reminds me a lot of B. Christian McCaffrey is one of yeah. them, oh, for yeah. instance. The, and he can sap the will of an opponent in a way similar to you, but very different than Derrick Henry. We're now joined by another one of the greatest running backs of the era, to Andy Reid's comparison. You guys, similar stylistically, not just because you play for the same Oh, B will just snap your, your ACL. Right. <laughs> I mean, that's exactly right. He'll snap your ACL. As, as yeah. opposed to go through your chest. Right. I, what I'm curious is, with your style, at what point in the game and how would you know when you could feel, mm. oh, they don't want this anymore. Oh, I, yeah. I, they, they are trying to avoid the contact that at this point I am trying to distribute. So my, my, my goal was to treat the first and second quarter like body blows, if you will. The gas tank, mm -hmm. like a boxing match. You know, hit them in the first quarter, you know, uh, in the middle. Hard three, hard four. Let them know this is how it's going to be for the rest of the day. So when the third and fourth quarters came, when it was time for me to really lay the hammer, I was getting the ball a little bit more. That's when the bigger runs were going to happen. So that's kind of how I approached the game, was I was going to use my size to my advantage and just wear on teams. And that's why I really uh, focused on my conditioning so I can be the best conditioned athlete. So I knew that by that 35th carry that I would be just as strong as the first one. And that was the illusion I tried to set So up. Derek Henry's on this unprecedented run. Yes. And he's healthy, and they're going to put the pedal on, and they're going to push him and all of it. Mm -hmm. If by some chance he is unable to be as successful, do they have another path to beating the Chiefs. I, I believe they do. Tanny Hill has the ability. He has the arm talent to put it into the tight window. He's played well this year. He's played extremely well. And A.J. Brown is a receiver that nobody's really talking about. He can stretch the field. And the reason why they haven't used him, because they didn't have to. When your running back is having that much success, you don't have to throw the ball 35 times a game. They said, listen, manage the game. Don't make mistakes, hand it off to 22. But when it comes time to throw that fade to John Lee Smith in the end zone or throw it over the top to one of your receivers, it'll be there. He can get it done. So I think in this game coming up, they're going to have to be a little bit more balanced because Spags is going to have something special. Listen, 22 is not going to beat us. He can't. I mean, he just can't do it. So they're going to have to load up the line of scrimmage, win uh, up front, and, and, and force Tanny Hill to beat you. We know right. what the Titans want to do on offense. They want to run the football down the throat. Mm -hmm. But what can they do defensively to stop 
what they'll face with Patrick Mahomes and that group of track athletes on the Chiefs side. Of the well, if I had the answer, I wouldn't be sitting here right now. But I tell you what, uh, Patrick Mahomes they, and that offense really impressed me because when you're down 24 points or 20 points in the first quarter and it looked like things were about to implode on them at home, you like, how can they mentally get over that? But to outscore them 51 to 7 thereafter. And they want to say, okay, we gave them the short field and so forth, they made mistakes, but they still had to execute. Those touchdowns still could have turned into threes, three points, and not, not gain the momentum. So, from a mental perspective, that team is quite dangerous. So, I'm not sure how, when they get on and not, they're not dropping problem. balls, it's going, to be, it's going to be a tough tough task for any team to stop that, ex that explosive offense. So, I, I'm not a superstitious person, but I do believe that if people believe in a superstition, it can almost have an effect. Like, mm -hmm. I think that if you – I don't know if there's such a thing as team of destiny, but if enough people believe they actually are, I think they, their performance might be enhanced. They might play better. Yes. The reason I bring it up is you, the year you guys made the Super Bowl, mm -hmm. it all started on one of the wildest plays oh. in NFL history, yeah. the, the Music City Miracle. Do the Titans have a miracle left in them in what has been a magical season to this point? If they do, they need it now. Christie kicks it high and short. Going to be fielded by Lorenzo Neal at the 25. Yeah, Pitches it, just... it back to Wycheck. He throws it across the field to Dyson. He's got something. 30, 40, He's got something. 50, He's got it. 40, He's got 40, it. 20, 10. He's got 5, it. End zone. Touchdown, Titans. There are no flags on the field. It's a miracle. Tennessee has pulled a miracle. And then, and I know you guys ultimately came, unfortunately, a yard short of the Super Bowl, but you From the 10, probably the final play of the game in regulation. It is caught by oh. Dyson. Can he get in? No, he cannot. Mike Jones made the tackle with the Rams, a team that hadn't had a winning year since 89, a team that was 4-12 and last year, a team that lost their multi-million dollar free agent quarterback in preseason, winning the Super Bowl by a yard. Many people will wonder, why didn't they throw the football into the end zone? Well, the end zone is defended by about seven defensive backs. You guys mm -hmm. then, you guys played some of your best football, including in that Super Bowl. You had all year after in that playoff game in the Music City Miracle, you didn't play your guys' best game of the year against Buffalo. The reason I bring it up is what type of week to week, I hate to use the term momentum, does Kansas City have after the way they beat Houston because yeah. they were down 24 0 and because they then felt unstoppable for two and a half quarters? And, and, that's, and that's the key for me is that you do pick up that momentum. When you experience, like, with the, with the uh, Music City Miracle, it, we've already expe experienced what it, was, what it was like to lose in that situation. It felt like somebody died prior to that That's play. Right. The ball goes to the uprights, like, okay, 16 seconds less. Okay, let's try to get the ball into Steve McNair's hands, let him do some magic, get us in field goal reading, something. But I'm thinking on the sideline, like, man, this is, my season's over, and it hurts. But when the play happens, it's like, oh, my God. We, it, we, we did it, and it, and it succeeded. You know, we passed the test. You know, they went to the review, and everything was perfect. And now we're going to on to see the Indianapolis Colts. So that momentum helped us. So after what I saw last week, when that could have gone south real quickly for Kansas City, the ability for them to come back and the fashion they did it, they're a dangerous team from a psychological standpoint. But the Titans, I think, have so much momentum yeah. coming into yeah. this. The Titans no beat a great Patriots team. Then they, well, then they beat a great Ravens team. No one really thought they could. No. I think they've the got the momentum. Exactly. What do you think about the Titans uh, track? Beat the GOAT. Beat the MVP at their place. So they come in with a ton of momentum. So that's what makes this a fascinating matchup to see whose will is going to outdo who's who. So that's that's what makes it uh, uh, a wonderful uh, AFC championship game. You've played in a bunch of uh, playoff games, but I think the experience in the regular season is hugely different from the experience no in, in the playoffs. And then you go to the NFC or AFC championship game, it's a bit different as well. What's the experience going to be like for Ryan Tannehill playing in his first a AFC championship game versus Patrick Mahomes, who was just in the game last year? Yeah, yeah. Uh, for Ryan, I think it's going to be um, treating it like any other game. I mean, he's been playing 
It's his first playoff game, really, since the start of Houston. That's when it all started, to be honest with yep. you, the regular season. They had to get in yep. the, the tournament, and they were able to do that. And I think the, the experience that he has now going on the road to New England, going on the road to Baltimore, uh, only helps him that much more. I don't think there's any more added pressure. Now all he has to do is go out there and perform not turn the ball over and get yeah. rattled, but if he can protect the football and, and um, convert on third downs, make plays with his legs, I think he can do a phenomenal job for him. The AFC South is a warm weather and a dome division. You obviously played in Houston and in Nashville. Mm -hmm. This weekend's game, the weather's not supposed to be, it's not supposed to be rain or snow, but I looked, it's supposed to be around 18 degrees around yeah. kickoff. What no sleeves. How, we'll no sleeves. sleeves. No sleeves. Yeah. How much, does that affect, it, maybe it didn't affect you. Listen, it but, won't affect that team. Okay. They've been there. They played. They, they beat Kansas City in Kansas City a couple years yep. ago with Marcus Mariota. Marcus Mariota threw a touchdown pass to him. So no sleeve weather. So that weather's out the, out the window. Okay. It's a matter of will at this point in time. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Running backs don't wear sleeves. Nah. They're the toughest guys nah. on the field. Nah. Oh, okay. nah. No sleeve. I think no Greg sleeves. Jennings is the only guy that came on set and said it was too cold. cold. Yeah. I really <laughs> wanted to. Well, he's a receiver. That's, That's what you expect out of him. Warm and sunny.